If you watch the presidential debates, um, if you read Tom Friedman or some of the other uh, pundits, you may believe, like I believe, uh, that we are on the cusp of an energy revolution, a real sea change in the way that we produce energy, the way that we um, utilize energy, the way that we consume energy. And that this revolution is being um, sort of driven by this sort of perfect storm of increasing global concern around the threat of climate change, um, a, a growing uh, perception of oil as a, as a big part of our national security and global security issues, and accelerating technology. Putting those three things together, you've got sort of the momentum for and the uh, ability to really change our energy system. I also believe that this revolution will be sort of governed, excuse me, <coughs> governed under a market mechanism called cap and trade. By setting a cap on the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions allowable and then letting companies to use their own innovation and economic uh, incentives to, to trade amongst each other, we can unleash the world's most powerful economic force, capitalism, uh, in service to our environmental goals. Cap and trade is just one example of the kind of market mechanisms um, that we promote and advocate for at Environmental Defense Fund and that are part of what we call the third wave of environmentalism. So if you think about the first wave uh, back in the early 1900s, maybe epitomized by Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt in the creation of the National Park Service, it was about land preservation. It was about understanding that there are wonderful places that we want to make sure are available for our grandchildren. The second wave in the 1960s, 1970s, was when we, uh, w when we created this complex system that we have now of environmental regulations, uh, what we call command and control. It told companies how, when, and what kind of pollution they could, they could produce. The third, and it was embodied uh, by, I would think, Rachel Carson, who was really the first person who kind of sounded the warning bells about uh, chemical pollution as early as the, the 1950s. But the third wave is it, not about preservation. It's not about taking things off the market. It's not about command and control but it is about leveraging the profit motive and the natural human urge for innovation to create environmental change. If, if you think about it at its basis, uh, profit is really nothing but the fruits of uh, smartly serving humans need, humankind's needs and wants, which include clean air and clean water. And so this third wave this third wave is, doesn't have a single face to it like a Teddy Roosevelt or a Rachel Carson, but it really is about collaboration and about partnerships um, you know, between entrepreneurs and innovators and investors, policymakers, uh, corporate managers, and even management consultants. So at Environmental Defense Fund, our partnerships uh, focus on three main goals. The first is that we are trying to create business benefit for our, for our corporate partners because without that, the environmental change, the environmental innovation is not sustainable in the long run and it's not replicable. Um, the second goal is we're trying to create measurable and significant environmental benefits. We're an environmental advocacy organization. That's what we call a result. The third change is that we're trying to kick off, or third goal is that we're trying to kick off a market transformation that will really raise the bar for a whole industry sector and therefore multiply the potential environmental benefits from, from the partnership, directly or indirectly. I want to give you a couple examples of some of our past partnerships so you can kind of get an idea of, of how they work put them in your head. Ken's going to talk uh, more about one of our current partnerships, which is with KKR. But let me just go back a little bit. Um, a few years ago, we partnered with FedEx to create uh, cleaner delivery trucks. And the idea was that FedEx has a lot of clout in the truck supply chain. They have a lot of influence over their suppliers. They buy a lot of trucks. And so by taking that market clout and creating a, a set of performance standards for a new truck, that we could get the attention of the supply community 
it moved in the direction that we wanted it to go, which was towards these performance goals. So we set up this competitive process for, for truck suppliers uh, to build a truck that went 50% further on a gallon of fuel, that in reduced emissions of uh, particulates, of soot, the little stuff that gets into your lungs and is not good, um, by 90%, and did it in a way that was cost competitive with the existing tr trucks that FedEx was using. Basically, we said, if you build it, we will come. And um, a few years later, it took a while. Uh, to, got, we had prototypes. We did testing. You know, we did design. Uh, went through a whole competitive process, narrowed it down. But we launched with FedEx the first commercially viable hybrid delivery trucks. And there are now 19 models of hybrid trucks on the market and over 80 fleets that are using hybrid trucks. So we feel like we did jumpstart this market transformation. We took a technology which for the trucking industry at the time was on the drawing board and we brought it to the production line.